general awareness on behalf of creative edge i welcome you all to the third session of this series that is nift marathon the topic for today's session as you can see in the questions behind me uh, is uh, related to general awareness today the agenda for the session is that we will go through the type of a question which we feel we we uh, expect them to appear but obviously not exactly the way we have portrayed it but yes to the way or in the way uh, this can come to and can be asked now way right so i'll be telling you the information which you should relate or should remember related to that question also make sure that you uh, start making uh, notes too so that you know what to be done with this particular session and your notes okay let's start with the first question for the day the first question here is which among the following is not a natural fabric now before you answer this question i'm sure you know the answer and it's quite an easy one but then before we start with this let me tell you usually in the paper you'll find one question talking about the type of fibers right so here the though the answer is very easy and simple <coughs> that is they are asking you which is not a natural fabric so silver uh, this uh, silk cotton polyester so obviously it has to be polyester but then apart from that now i'm i'm telling a few names which you should write apart from uh, the ones which are there we all know that silk is a natural fabric cotton is a natural fabric apart from that flex f l a x flex hemp bamboo jute sea silk these all are the natural fibers so you should know all these names i repeat cotton flex f l a x hemp h e m p bamboo sea silk s i s a l and jute apart from that a few days ago Uh, there was this uh, uh, news about nift bhubaneswar where the people have started some eco friendly you know initiatives to make fiber so from there there is a word which has been taken out that is tncl tencel tencel is again a kind of fiber so that is uh, eco friendly it means <laughs> a natural one so the point which you are supposed to remember is the uh you know the product from which the fiber is made so that is wood pulp t e n c l tensile fiber is made out of wood pulp so that is one more point which you should remember when it comes to fiber so make sure that you read you study as much as you can about the fibers if i ask about the artificial ones so i'm sure you know polyester nylon rayon acrylic aramid a r a m i d these are few examples of uh, artificial fibers i repeat rayon nylon polyester acrylic aramid a r a m i d right let's move on to second question of the day which is asking you about the indian fashion designers i'm sure you still remember we talked on this particular point that you should know the names of fashion designers as many as you can right here they are they have asked you who is not an indian fashion designer right it means that all the four it uh, they are the fashion designers only i'm sure you have heard about ritu kumar when i say ritu kumar there is something which you should know and remember that she has three brands on her name or i should say the ritika industries private limited is the company which she owns and under that there are three brands by three names she has she actually launches her brands one is by her own name that is ritu kumar second is re only ri re right so remember that these are the ritu kumar labels or the label by ritu kumar that is the third one for sure right here ritu kumar is an indian rohit bal is an indian manish malhotra is an indian so obviously the third option that is bibi rosal 
she is a bangladeshi fashion designer and she is internationally acclaimed that's why you should know that bibi russell is a fashion designer from the country bangladesh they then usually ask you about the brands and their owners right if i uh, ask you something related to current affairs which is making news everywhere that is air india i'm sure you know that now air india is owned by Air India has come back to, or if if I ask you, can you tell me the three airlines which either jointly or completely owned by the Tata Group? Jointly or completely owned by Tata Group, there are three airlines now in which Tata Group they have their share. So one is for sure. I am sure you know that Air India is now a Tata Group uh, company. The other one is Vistara Airlines. and i'm sure you know that who is the brand ambassador of the vistara airlines too uh, if you see the advertisement you will see the pika padukon there so yes vistara airline has the pika padukon as their brand ambassador and the third one is sia that is singapore airlines so these three airlines they have uh, either to an extent some share or maybe the complete share of uh, tata right okay here the question is about big bazaar they have asked you the retail venture the retail venture big bazaar is owned by bharti group reliance group future group or raheja group so uh, if you remember if you have seen the last session we talked about shopper stop shopper stop is owned by raheja group <coughs> here the question is about big bazaar big bazaar is owned now by the reliance retail i'm sure some of you will be like okay it is owned by future group but then see remember future group it was owned by future group kishor biyani is the founder of the future group brand factory is you know one brand which you should know is right now owned by future group please start making notes somewhere uh, you know give it a heading future group and then write down the names of the brands which you see comes under that so future group write somewhere future group in bracket kishor biyani the owner the founder of future group and under that write down the name of the brand factory as a brand owned by future group now the point is uh, uh, this uh, big bazaar is now owned by reliance retail apart from that i'm sure you have heard about lifestyle the lifestyle brand it is owned by landmark group pantaloons is owned by aditya birla group and uh, max fashion it is again a division of lifestyle only right so landmark group is the group which owns lifestyle as well as max i repeat whatever i have <coughs> just said shopper stop is owned by raheja group big bazaar is owned by reliance retail brand factory is owned by the future group lifestyle is owned by the landmark group max is also owned by the landmark group right so uh, apart from these if you get to you know know about more products and their owners you should read it now the next question is one which uh, has been asked in one of the previous year exams and that's why it is here you should know it they have asked you in which year did the lakme fashion week start so it started in the year 1999 1999 was the year in which the lakme fashion week first start or it was first held in the year 1999 okay let me tell you a few more information related to this because every year they ask you a few question related to the fashion weeks so in india if we talk yes lakme fashion week is one of the most uh, you know renowned one Uh, they ask you at what frequency <coughs> excuse me does it take place so it is bi annual we all know that there are two collections which are launched every uh, time when there is a fashion week going on so it is uh, winter collection autumn collection or summer collection what you call as so there are broadly two right now um, something which you should remember regarding this years is uh, this is fdci right this year the the fashion the lakme fashion week which was held was uh, in collaboration with fdca so you should know the uh, full form of fdca what is fdca fdca is fashion design council of india 
know the full form of FDCI that is Fashion Design Council of India. Okay. Now let's move on to the next question. Again, a question related to brands. Uh, the question here is the fifth one. West Side Stores is an enterprise of. I'm sure you know that West Side is owned by which group? Let's do it that way. Uh, we have just uh, you know highlighted one thing: the Tata Group as a group. So under Tata's, the first thing which we have written is uh, like the three airlines. SIA Singapore Airlines with Tara and uh, the third one that is now Air India apart from that now West Side is as we all know is owned by Tata Group I'm sure you also know that Starbucks in India is run in collaboration with Tata Group only right so uh, make it a heading somewhere Tata Group and under it write down the name of three airlines West Side Store and now the Starbucks too, right? Here the answer to this question, West Side is owned by the Tatas. The next question is about a forest preserve or a wildlife sanctuary. You will see a history of such questions being asked almost every year. So it's not only this one that is Sarsika Forest Reserve. You should know at least 8 to 10 uh, names which are quite famous when it comes to national parks or wildlife sanctuaries in India. So, uh, first of all, let's uh, answer this question which is there in front of our eyes and then I'll add a few more. I'll add a few more names. You uh, try and reply me in the chat box, otherwise, I'll give you the answer, right? So, Sarsika uh, Reserve Forest or Forest Reserve is in the state of Rajasthan. And when I say Rajasthan, I'm sure one more national park is known to you, that is Ranthambore. So, in Rajasthan, the, uh, the two, you know, forest reserve or wildlife sanctuary, which we should know, are Sarsika Forest Reserve and Ranthambore National Park. Now, tell me, tell me, there was this news a few days back, <coughs> Mata Rani or Kolavriya Kolarwali is the name of a tigress which passed away and she was one of the most clicked tigress or tiger in this world. She passed away, she was celebrated one, she was you know um, given the final uh, this uh, bid uh, goodbye uh, in a very you know respectable manner. Why? Because she is the one who contributed in increasing the population of tiger the most. Can you tell me, she is also known as the Queen of which Tiger Reserve or can you tell me the name of the Tiger Reserve where she lived? So that makes a beautiful question because every year they ask you something related to, you know, Reserve, Tiger Reserve and Wildlife Centuries. So I believe current affairs and a combination of general awareness makes it a good question. So you should remember that it is Pench Tiger Reserve, P-N-C-H. The Tigress was named as the Queen of Pench. And Pench Tiger Reserve is in Madhya Pradesh. Remember that too. Pench Tiger Reserve is in Madhya Pradesh. Now, let me ask you, where do you see a Corbett National Park or Jim Corbett National Park? Jim Corbett National Park is in Uttarakhand. Jim Corbett National Park is in Uttarakhand. Where do you see Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary? Where, whenever you see this word, na, Periyar. So, Periyar, this is a, you know, a place or a word which relates to the state of Kerala. Whether dam, where wildlife sanctuary, whatever periyar comes somewhere. Na? So if you have to make a logical guess, it has to be Kerala. I'm sure the next one you all know, Sundarban. Sundarban is a national park in the state of West Bengal. Right? Ajay, tell me, uh, I have a question for you. I'm sure you all have heard about UNESCO heritage sites, right? So, when I talk about UNESCO heritage sites, I'm sure you know that there are broadly three categories. Natural, cultural and mixed heritage sites. Natural, cultural and mixed. Natural means what? Natural mein aate hain, just say uh, we do have this entire Western Ghat biodiversity region there in the, you know, UNESCO preserved area. Similarly, we have ancient sites like we have Ajanta Elora Caves, you know, we have Rani Ki Vav and all. Similarly, there's a mixed site. Mixed means it is both cultural as well as natural. 
So now in India, the question is, the question comes now. In India, there is only one mixed heritage site. Can you name what is that? I'll wait for 30 seconds uh, for you to answer me in the chat box. Then I'll tell you the answer. What is the only mixed heritage site in India? The name of the only mixed heritage site. If I have to give you a hint, the hint will be it's a national park. The hint will be it is a national park. I'm waiting for the answer. If you know the answer, please tell me. Okay, so I'll tell you the answer. <laughs> it is Kanchanjunga National Park. Kanchanjunga National Park is the only national park in India or the only site in India which has got a mixed heritage site status by UNESCO, right? Now, Kaziranga National Park is known for one horned rhinos and it is in Assam. Kanha Kisli or Kanha National Park is in Madhya Pradesh. Bandhagarh is in Madhya Pradesh. But remember, Bandipur is in Karnataka. Don't get confused between the two words, Bandipur and Bandhagarh. Bandhagarh is in Madhya Pradesh. Bandipur National Park is in Karnataka. And then the last one, which I am um, not really sure if you have heard about this or not. So, Govind Wildlife Sanctuary, it's there in Uttarakhand, right? So, from Uttarakhand, we have learned two. Jim Corbett and Govin. From MP, we have learned three. Kanha Kisli, Bandhavgarh and Pinch. From um, Rajasthan, we have, uh, you know, remember two. Sarsika and Ranthambur. So, you can even divide the national park here in the form, in the, in the you know, uh, by the way, they are there in these states to remember the information quite clearly. Let's move on to the next question. Sometimes, not regularly, but then, but then, yes, yeah, sometimes they ask you, that which designer you know designed the clothes for what movie the question here is about the movie black who was the designer uh, for the costume who was the costume designer for the movie black is the question here if you know can you tell me the answer otherwise uh, i'll give you a hint i'll give you a hint i'll give it that way i'm sure you have heard about this brand h and m can you tell me which country does it belong to H&M? H&M belongs to Sweden. Now, the news is, there was this news recently that H&M has, uh, you know, joined hands with one of the famous Indian designers to launch, a, you know, collection there. So, that Indian designer is Sabhisachi only and the answer to this question is also Sabhisachi. So current affairs, they, what I have brought to you is that you should know Sabdi uh, has recently joined hands with H&M, which is a Swedish brand, to launch a particular collection. Here the question is, who was the dress designer of the movie Black? The answer is Sabdi Okay, now, it is a, a question which we all should know and we sh all have read it since our childhood. So, please read it carefully and tell me the answer. They are asking you, greenhouse effect means what? Make sure you do one thing. Make it a habit until unless you read all the options. Do not mark any, right? Because sometimes it happens just after reading first option, we feel like, see, this is the correct answer. But when you further go into the depth, you understand that no, there is a better answer to that question. So, read the question and then tell me what is the answer to question number eight that is greenhouse effect means what greenhouse effect means what okay mm, akshita is saying the is this answer to question number eight only write the question number also uh, so that i can get that this answer is for which question so uh, greenhouse effect means uh, if i consider that this is the answer to question number eight Greenhouse effect means trapping of solar energy due to atmospheric carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. So yes, answer to question 8 has to be option B only. Right? Uh, so this is a phenomena because of which there is life on this planet. That is greenhouse effect. Answer to that question is option B. Good. Now, a critical concern of fashion designer is what? If you are a fashion designer what should be a concern for you out of the four options there is simple logic here right so use uh, your instinct 
of being a fashion designer and tell me if you are a fashion designer what concern uh, should be the biggest one for you how to make simple but attractive dresses how to make expensive dresses how to match the dress with the season or importance of a particular fashion what should be a concern to you nanika is this answer to question number 9 If it is answer to question number nine, I believe uh, no, it should not be because the concern is not how to make expensive dresses, right? Yes, ninth, yes, ninth answer. It has to be importance of a particular fashion. Good. Tell me the answer to question number ten. That is, on whose name is the highest award for services to the development of cinema given in India? The National Films Award. If we talk. उसमें द ग्रेटेस्ट अवार्ड इज द वन विच इज नेम्ड आफ्टर अ पर्सन हु इज नोन एज द फादर ऑफ इंडियन सिनेमा दैट इज दादा साहब फालके अवार्ड सो आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज दादा साहब फालके नाउ इफ आई आस्क यू कैन यू टेल मी द नेम ऑफ द मोस्ट रिसेंट रेसिपियंट ऑफ दादा साहब फालके अवार्ड कैन यू टेल मी द नेम ऑफ द मोस्ट रिसेंट रेसिपियंट ऑफ दादा साहब फालके अवार्ड okay uh, this is a good question because nif they ask you at least one question on awards recently conferred and when i say award it can be any it's not necessarily the, the awards related to film okay so you should remember the most recent recipient of dada saab phalke award is the actor rajnikanth the most recent recipient of dada saab phalke award is this can you tell me the name of the first lady of indian cinema who is known as the first lady of indian cinema i'm sure you know that there was a time when women were not supposed to or they did not work in the films right so that was the time when even the characters of women were played by men so uh, now the time changed and then there was this uh, for the first time a lady uh, you know um, a lady uh, acted in an indian film and this lady is known as the first lady of indian cinema and she is also the first recipient of dada saheb phalke award the name of this lady is devika rani devika rani is known as the first lady of indian cinema and she is also the first recipient of dada saheb phalke award uh, can you tell me the name of uh, can you tell me the name of the first movie which was uh, you know launched produced in india the name of the first indian film obviously made by dada saheb phalke and that's why he is known as the father of indian cinema the first indian movie was named raja harish chandra which was colorless which was soundless it did not have sound it did not have color so uh, the first film was harish chandra raja harish chandra now can you tell me the first movie with sound effects in india jisko in hindi we can say pehli bolti film jo thi wo kaun si thi so the name yes yes drishti you are correct the first uh, film the sound film of india is still alam ara a l a m alam ara is the first sound film and the first color film of india was the first movie the first colored film in india don't tell me mughle azam i know a mm, a few of you will be having this name ki it is mughle azam but no mughle azam is not the first color film of india the first color film of india is known as kisan kanya kisan kanya is the first colored movie so what we have learnt uh, through this question is dada saheb phalke father of indian cinema the first movie raja harish chand the first sound film alamara first uh, colored film that is kisan kanya and the most recent recipient is rajnikanth of this award by the way now there are only two names left and that's why i feel that i should tell you you should remember it for this year 2021 which actress has been conferred with the best actress award national films award may best actress ka award is sal se mila hai that actress is kamna ranawat and why should you remember this name because this is for the first time that one actress has been given the award for two movies the two movies are first is manikarnika and second is panga 
So for these two movies, she has been conferred with the Best Actress Award. And the Best Actor Award um, is shared by two persons. One is Manoj Pajpai, second is Dhanush, right? So this year, Rajanikant, Kangana Ranawat. And the third is actor, that is Manoj Bajpai and uh, this Dhanush, right? Now I move on to the second question. Uh, the next question, that is the 11th one. They have asked you, where is Louis Vuitton headquarters located? So where is it uh, located? Can you tell me what country does it belong to? Which se country is it? Okay, so Louis Vuitton is a French brand, Paris se yata hai. I, I request you to, you know, write somewhere now. I'll be taking a few names which you should remember that they belong to which country. I'm sure you have heard this name, Zara. Z-A-R-A. -A. Zara is an apparel brand. It comes from the country Spain. I'm sure you have heard about this brand too, Mango. Mango in India has recently appointed, can you tell me which actress as its brand ambassador? The brand Mango in India has recently appointed which actress as its brand ambassador? Nanika is saying question. Okay, 11th answer C. It's correct. It's correct. Right. So yes, I was uh, asking. I was talking about Zara and Mango. They were uh, the uh, both belong to. Uh, they both belong to the country Spain, right? And the recently appointed uh, brand ambassador of the brand Mango is Vani Kapoor. Vani Kapoor. Next H and M. I'm sure you you now know it is a Swedish brand. Adidas, Puma, they both are uh, uh, the brands from the country Germany. Adidas, Puma, they are German brand. Gucci, Armani, Diesel, Dolls, Cabana, Fendi, Valentino, Versace, they all belong to Italy. If you cannot, uh, you know, write it with me simultaneously, I'll just tell you, read it what, that, just search it out somewhere obviously on google uh, famous apparel brands and their country of origin and you will see the list out of the list obviously there will be multiple but then those who are renowned ones known ones try to remember the names i repeat the italian brands are gucci armani diesel dolce gabbana fendi valentino versace french brands are chanel dio louis vuitton as we have seen right yeah the uh, 12th question is a question which has been repeatedly asked. Uh, it has been asked a lot of time. So this is about little black dress. Who is associated with this little black dress that is known as LBD in short LBD. So it is related to Coco Chanel. Coco Chanel is the one who you know for, for the first time created this particular uh, you know little black dress. So, Coco Chanel is the answer. The next question is uh, an easy one. World's biggest retailer brand. For quite some time now, I mean uh, for last 3-4 years as far as I remember, the world's uh, biggest retailer brand, it has been Walmart only. It has been Walmart only. That is now closely followed by Amazon, then Alibaba. So, it is Walmart first position second amazon and the third is alibaba i'm sure you know you have heard about alibaba group or alibaba that is an online shopping site which belongs to country which country can you tell me the name of the country to which it belong to alibaba belongs to i'm waiting for your answer in the chat box alibaba belongs to which country Alibaba ke founder ka naam hai Jack Ma and it, bel it, it belongs to China. So Alibaba is a Chinese firm. Next, they usually ask you at least one question on important days. Like here they have asked you, can you tell us the date of International Yoga Day? So I'm sure this is an easy one for most of us. Uh, yes, it is China. It is uh, an easy question for most of us. International Yoga Day is on July 21st. 
July 21st was International Yoga Day, right? Uh, I request you to please go through these uh, these dates because they have they they are the ones which uh, are recently you know announced by the Prime Minister of India, Parakram Divas, birthday of Subhash Chandra Bose. That is 23rd of January. The other day which you should remember is this. Uh, uh, I'm forgetting that exact word. Uh, please, इसको search करिएगा. That is Bal, uh, you know, Sahas Wala Divas. Uh, that is the day on which uh, the sons of Guru Gobind Singh Ji they were martyred. So it is uh, in December only, right? Uh, so these are the days which you should know and which you should remember because they have been recently announced. Next is what basic type of weave has diagonal design on the surface. Please go through these designs, search it out, see it, and then know how does it look. So that ma'am, 21st January the yoga day. Yes, Trishti, 21st January is the yoga day. I'm sure you also know that 21st January is the longest day of the year too. Longest day of the year too. Geographically, 21st of June hota hai, right? Now, uh, the next question is about the design. Diagonal design pattern is me sir, is me dekhenge. I am sure you understand. Satin or satin is the type of a fabric, right? Piling is a piling. Plain means plain. So the diagonal design pattern which they are talking about here is twill. T W I double L. In fact, I think you should search it, right? What? Uh, no, pile means a matter of simply pile. Alan is saying not July. No, twenty first of June is International Yoga Day. It's not July twenty first. I'm really sure June twenty first, right? That is the longest day of the year. Twill it is uh, yes one of the ways in which you know design is done. I request you to please search it out. Um, different types of designs, yeah, different types of weaving. Search it out. And you'll find at least four to five majorly used design patterns. Have a look on them. Try and understand how are they done. Because obviously the question may come on some other design pattern too. Cloths made by interlooping of yarn. I'm sure you know that interlooping of yarn. से आप क्या बनाते हैं? I'm sure you have seen your grandma there in your house doing that particular thing. That is to knitting. That is to knit fabric. So knitting is basically the technique. uh next is a good question they as they ask you at least one question about the fashion week so they have asked you who organizes london fashion week the answer to this question is the british fashion council option a the british fashion council as can you name uh in in the in the, in the you know field of fashion there is this big four fashion weeks can you name who are those big four fashion weeks which are those big four fashion weeks what are known as big four big four obviously has to be one has to be london fashion week second is the new york fashion week the third is milan and the fourth is paris new york milan paris these are the and the london they are known as the big four right next is a is a question related to a garment they usually ask you one question related to the garments only so they have asked you about poncho i'm sure you have seen poncho you know what a poncho is so poncho is a kind of a dress and uh, it comes from uh, basically south america so the origin of poncho the dress comes from south america there's nothing more to add to this question so i move on to question number 19 what type of product is calico what is calico basically calico is basically a kind of cotton only it is a it is it, it is cotton based fabric so calico is cotton only remember that milan fashion week bilkul sahi hai sir i have moved on to the next question that is calico is uh, is a kind of cotton only remember that name the world famous fashion designer who belongs to florida so florida ko belong karne wale inme se jo hai that has to be who louis vuitton we just have discussed belongs to uh, italy so obviously it cannot be, uh, sorry france 
I, I, I correct myself. I'm really sorry. It's not Italy. It's France. So Louis Vuitton belongs to France. So it cannot be Florida for sure. It has to be somebody who is from US. Right, so it is like uh, pure cardigan. Uh, jo hai, pure cardigan, uh, basically, pure cardigan is an Italian born French designer, and uh, I'm sure you have heard about the pen of pure cardigan. But then he was not only the pen designer, he designed apparels too, he designed a lot of things. The answer to this question the famous designer who belongs to Florida is Gianni Versace. Option number C is the answer here. Answer to question number 28 is. Option number C. Now, uh, like in India, we say the you know highest award in the in the field of films is National Films Award. Uh, if I ask about the world, so I'm sure you have heard the name of the Oscars. Oscars is considered to be the greatest award when it comes to the field of films. The question here is international award given by Academy of you know, motion picture arts and this US, if you see that. So it is what in the field in the field of cinema. So in the field of cinema, it is Oscars. Now I'm telling you three more names. Make sure you remember that. What is the uh, music equivalent of the Oscars? Oscar is related to movies, right? When it comes, uh, Oscar is related to films, right? When it comes to music. When it comes to music, music ki dunia ke sabse bade awards jo hai, that is Grammy Awards. G R A W M Y. Grammy Awards music. Grammy Awards music. Oscars movies. Emmy television. E W M Y. Emmy television. And Tony Awards are for the field of little of theater so grammy music oscar movies tony theater emmy television this is something which you should know uh twenty word is a very nice uh, question because uh, it is something which we have uh, you know studied in uh, in our fourth fifth sixth standard which of the following is the source of non-conventional energy which of the following is a source of non-conventional energy? Can you tell me which is a non-conventional form of energy here? Yes, Radhima, Himadri, uh, Grammy is for music only. The next question is which of the following is non-conventional? Uranium, petroleum, coal or solar power? So the answer to this question must be I'm waiting for your answers in the chat box. You tell me first, then I'll give my answer. Non-conventional source of energy is, is solar power. Very good. Non-conventional source of energy is solar power. Next, Bataiega. Uh, Mia is the work wear jewelry from the house of which particular brand? Mia is the brand from the house of Tanishk and Tanishk is owned by again the Tatas. Tanishk is a Tata product. So please somewhere in that list of the companies or the brands owned by Tatas write one more name. So far we have written the name of three airlines. I'm sure you remember that. That are Vistara, Singapore Airlines, Air India, then Westside then Starbucks and now Tanish. They all are the Tata products or maybe Tata owned brands. Agile is a sports lifestyle brand from the house of pantaloons. From the house of pantaloons. Right. Agile is a brand from the house of pantaloons. Achha, can you tell me this if, uh, if, if we talk about this uh, sports brand. Uh, who was the founder of this Adidas and who was the or can you name the do, have you heard this story if not uh, I'll tell you that that was this Dazzler brothers uh, who you know started this Adidas but then because of uh, differences between them they had a fight and the two separated and that's how the second brand that is Puma 
uh, got its uh, origin. So Adidas and Puma, they were, you know, uh, established by two real brothers only. One was Adolf Dessler, the other one was Rudolf Dessler. Adolf Dessler is the founder of Adidas and Rudolf Dessler is the founder of Puma. And that's why we just uh, went through that names, right? If you remember, Adidas and Puma, they both belong to which country? Germany. So they were basically, you know... Uh, Founded by two brothers only. Yepme is a sportswear brand uh, from uh, India only. It's an Indian brand. So remember that it is an Indian brand. Acha, can you tell me Mintra is owned by which Mintra is owned by which online uh, shopping brand? Adidas, yes. He jo brand ambassador hai, that is Ditka Padukon. Now, tell me, tell me the question, the answer to this question, which I just asked you. Flipkart in India is owned by? Okay, I asked Mintra is owned by, but then it has, like, there is a series, there is a chain, I'm sure you know that. Walmart owns Flipkart, Flipkart, uh, Flipkart owns Mintra. So, it's like Walmart, Flipkart, Mintra, right? Check. The next question here is, which one of the following clothing brand is not owned by the Raymond Group? Raymond since 1947, you have heard of what brand is not owned by Raymond Group? So Raymond, they do not own Arrow. Arrow is not a product of Raymond's. Raymond's ke jo product hai, uske naam I tell you. Park Avenue, Park Avenue Women, Color Plus, Ethnics, and uh, Raymond and Raymond Premium. These are the brands owned by the Raymond Group. Okay. Uh, 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 usually, they ask you a few questions about the recent appointments, recently appointed people. And that's why you see this question here, that who has been appointed as the 48th Chief Justice of India. So, I'm sure you know that the current Chief Justice of India, that is the 48th Chief Justice of India, CJI, jisko hum kehte hai, that is N. V. Ramanna. N. V. Ramanna, you usually see this name only, N. V. Ramanna, but his full name is there mentioned in the, uh, in the option there, right? Can you tell me who is this S. Somnath? Who is this S. Somnath? He is there in the news for past, uh, I believe, 15-20 uh, days? S. Somnath. If I have to give you a hint, I can uh, tell you that he is now the head of uh, one of the most prestigious institutes in India who works in the field of space technology. S. Somnath is the head of one institute of India in India who works in the sphere of space technology. Can you name that institute? I'm waiting for your answer. Great. Sahil, yes, you are correct. That's Isro. So, Isro has got a new chairperson and his name is S. Somnath. S. Somnath is the new chairperson of Isro. I'm sure you people know the full form of Isro. That is Indian Space Research Organization. And its headquarter is there in Bangalore. There is one more organization. Uh, this this uh, takes me to one more important question. I'm sure you know the name of the first manned mission being launched by India. Can you tell me the name of the first manned mission which we have, you know, targeted that will, we have set it uh, a deadline for that 2023 will become we hope and we have, uh, you know, complete faith in uh, ISRO that we are going to achieve this feat also. So, we will become fourth nation in this world to have manned mission. We have already three uh, astronauts whose identity are still, identity is not revealed for obviously the security reason. They are getting training and they'll be going to, they'll be going into space and that will be India's first manned mission. Can you name the name of that mission? Launched by ISRO only. Okay, I'll tell you the name. I'm sure you have heard it somewhere. That is Gaganyaan. 
Mission Gaganyaan is India's first manned mission. If it becomes successful, India will become only the fourth nation in this world after obviously US, Russia and China to have their own manned mission, right? So we people have uh, uh, three astronauts, not astronauts right now. So like there's an entire story behind that which I surely cannot take right now. So I'll move ahead. Remember the name as Somnath is the new head of ISRO. 48 Chief Justice of India is N.V. Ramanna. The next question is, um, which of the following retail stores belong to Aditya Birla Group? Which of the following belongs to Aditya Birla Group? Big Bazaar, Abhi Humne Baat Kya Tha, is owned by Reliance Retail. Hyper City and Shopper's Stop is owned by Raheja Group. Grassim in itself is a Grassim. So, obviously, uh, the, uh, the answer to this is Chroma. Chroma used to be a subsidiary of Tata Group. But now, it's under Aditya Birla. So, the answer to this... Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I repeat my words. I have missed on, on one point. I repeat. Big Bazaar is owned by Reliance Retail. Hyper City and Shoppers Stop, they are owned by the Raheja Group. And the answer to this question is Grassin Industries only. Grassin is a subsidiary of Tata Group. And Chroma in India is owned by uh, Tata Group. So Grassin is the answer here to Aditya Birla. And Chroma is the answer. If asked, achha, so in that list of Tata Group, you should add one more name after Tanish. After Tanish, it, it has to be Chroma. Chroma, I'm sure you have heard the name of retail chain of consumer electronics and it is a Tata owned subsidiary, right? So, Aditya Birla Retail Group owns Grassim Industries. The, huh, I, I jump to question number 31 because uh, they ask you about the four grand slams i'm sure you all know that in tennis we do have four grand slams starting with australian open french open then us open and then wimbledon right out of all these four they are individually known as the grand slams recently there's this australian open which was concluded and you must be aware that it is rafael nadal who has won the australian open and with his win, he has, you know, created a world record of being the player, men, in men category only, to have the maximum number of Grand Slams. I'm sure this must, uh, this must, you know, make you uh, think that if in the men category is the highest, then does it mean that uh, there are women who are ahead of these three men? That is Rafael Nadal with 21 Grand Slams is the men with the highest number of Grand Slams, followed by... Novak Djokovic and Roger Federer, they both are at 20th, right? With 20 Grand Slams, they are at the second position. There's a tie. Now, but then I'm sure you must be knowing this name, Serena Williams. Serena Williams is still ahead of Rafael Nadal too. So, it, the, if I have to collate it for you, to make it easy for you, I'll say it this way. Margaret Court is the tennis player with the maximum number of Grand Slams in the entire history. Open, close both. That is Margaret Court with 24 Grand Slams, followed by Serena Williams, 23 Grand Slams, followed by Steffi Graf, 22 Grand Slams, and then comes Rafael Nadal. So in the entire history of tennis, the top three names which hold the you know maximum number of grand slams are women and then at fourth it is Rafael Nadal and then at fifth position there's a tie between Novak Djokovic and Roger Federer right okay so now we move ahead this question answer to this question I I think now it has to be changed I think Wimbledon co I'll replace with uh, with Australian Open 2022 because that is the most recent one. So, if if asked women single Australian 2022 title, then the answer remains same. That is like Ashley Barty. Ashley Barty is the winner of Australian Open 2022. Rafael Nadal is the winner of uh, Australian Open men's 2022. Rafael Nadal is also known as the king of clay because he has won the maximum number of French Open tournament. And French Open tournament is played on clay court and that's why it is known as clay court tournament. 
The next question is about BRICS group of countries. BRICS has got a full form which I am sure you all know. B stands for Brazil, R for Russia, I for India, C for China and S for South. South Africa, right? S might confuse you. Please, usko dhyan rakhega. That S here stands for South Africa. Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. They are asking you the name of the bank which, uh, you know, is established by the BRICS. So, the name of the bank which they this group has established is New Development Bank. The name of the BRICS bank is New Development Bank. The bank is headquartered in China, in China that is Shanghai to be specific. 33rd question. Yes, Akshita, you are correct. New Development Bank. 33rd question is, I believe now every one of us know. Every one of us know. Who has been appointed as the CEO of Twitter? Twitter के CEO इन में से कौन अपॉइंट हुए हैं? चलिए, I think there are two names which you should remember. First is for sure the answer to this question that is Parag Ugarwal. I'm sure there is no doubt about that. You all know. And then there is one more name which deals with the, you know, the field in which you people are going to be. So that is uh, the question. I, I'll directly ask you the question. If you know the answer, please reply in the chat box. You can, can, can you tell me who has taken over as the chief executive officer that is the CEO of French luxury brand Chanel. Chanel ki CEO Kaun Bani hai? She is an Indian and that's why this uh, is a good question for us to be remembered. And the answer to this question is Lena Nair. Lena Nair. Lena, yes, 33rd CEO Twitter is Parag Gagarwal. The next is the French brand Chanel has appointed its global CEO Lena Nair who is an Indian and that's why you should remember this, right? Uh, we move uh, ahead, ha, 34th. This question is something which makes you, you know, uh, it should make you read a lot. For an example, if you know this year in the list of this Padma Shri, we have seen the name uh, like um, Neera Chopra, Devin Chajharia. Can you tell me to what sport will you associate Neera Chopra and Devin Chajharia with? Devin Chanjaria, he plays what sport? Uh, Lena, uh, this. Uh, uh, Neera Chopra, he plays what, what sport? Can you tell me? They, uh, they both are javelin thrower. They play the game javelin. If I ask you, Manika Batra, can you tell me with what sport will you relate Manitra, Manika Batra to? So, Manika Batra is a table tennis player, Indian table tennis player, right? Recently, we all know that there is this Indian tennis player who has announced uh, her retirement from the world of tennis. That is uh, Sanya Mirza. Nehwal, we know that. PV Sindhu, we know that. They belong to badminton, right? Uh, Mithali Raj, I'm sure you know, is a cricketer. And uh, Harsim, um, Har Harmanpreet Kaur is again, you know, a cricketer. So, these are the few names which made the sports person who made news recently. You should know to what uh, sport do they belong to. So, please go through the list of uh, famous Indian, uh, you know, uh, these sports player. Yes, answer to this question is golf. Anirban Lehri is an Indian golfer. He plays golf. The next question is a good one because I'm sure you all know that Tokyo Olympics. Achha, can you tell me 2022 year is the year for Winter Olympics, right? Winter Olympics, they are going to start from, you know, in February only, right? Can you tell me which is the host country for Winter Olympics 2022? Who is going to host Winter Olympics 2022? I'm looking for your answers, waiting for your answers. The host of 2022 Olympics. Okay, so it is China and it is there in the news because it is for the happening for the first time in the entire history of Olympics, Winter Olympics especially, specifically that. Winter Olympics, may, uh, the games which need snow, 
the entire snow this year china has created artificially so the snow amount of snow which is used this year in winter olympics is all artificial and obviously it has many tokyo rhythm was the one which happened right tokyo uh, was supposed to happen tokyo olympics was supposed to happen in uh, 2022 because of pandemic it was postponed it happened in 2021 right now winter i'm sure you know that there are two summer and winter they happen at a gap of two years so 2022 is the winter olympics china is hosting it 2024 is summer olympics again paris is the host of summer olympics paris is if you know hosting the olympics after a gap of 100 years so it was uh, you know uh, 1924 when Paris hosted the event and now after 100 years 2024 Paris is going to host the Summer Olympics again. Okay so the question here is that India won uh, this bronze medal in Tokyo and by defeating which country so the country which it defeated was Germany. Neera Chopra gold medalist hai from Haryana won a gold in Tokyo that's correct and he is the second person second individual to win a gold medal for India because first one remains Abhinav Bindra, the first Indian ever to uh, win an individual gold medal because see before that we have won gold medal but then that, that was a team event that was hockey. So hockey mein pehle humne jeeta hai group medal but individual first person uh, was this uh, the shooter Abhinav Bindra and the second person is Neeraj Chopra right. The next question is election commission was set up in, in what year? Uh, this question is important because uh, I'm sure you know that 25th of January is celebrated as National Voters Day in India. 25th of January is National Voters Day in India and it is to commemorate the establishment of uh, election commission of India which was established in the year 1950. So it was 1950, 25th of January when the election commission of India was set up. Uh, the next question is about Punch Shield Treaty. I'm sure you know that Punch Shield was the, you know, a treaty signed between India and China on five points of mutual understanding, mutual cooperation and all. And that has got again a very, uh, you know, huge story. Uh, okay, so this is Punch Shield which we signed with China. The next question is about sobriquet. Remember, they usually ask at least one question on sobriquet. Now, sobriquet is what? Like, for an example, if I ask you, can you tell me which city is known as the orange city in India? So, that is, you know, uh, Nagpur. If I ask you which uh, city in India is uh, uh, known as, uh, let's say, the Silicon Valley of India. So, it is Bangalore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the thing is, uh, here the question is about the uh, middle of gold, so that is Sonmark. Sonmark is known as the middle of gold. Uh, if I ask you which city, which country is known as the sugar bowl of the world, that is Cuba, right? So make sure that you go through the sobriquet use, you understand that what city is known for what thing. So for an example, if I have to put more example, can you tell me the place which is known as the land of white elephants? So, land of white elephants is Thailand, right? Cockpit of Europe uh, is Belgium, is known as the cockpit. Uh, the land of cakes is Switzerland, right? So, these are sobriquets. Make sure you go through them, Anna, and then you learn okay, what is known as what particular city in India. Which city in Karnataka, the next question is, which city in Karnataka is also known as its cultural, is also known as its cultural capital and is famous for temples and places and palaces and forts and old church. So I'm sure Bangalore is known as the high-tech city. It is not, uh, you know, known for various temples and palaces. I'm sure you have heard about this Mysore palace. Um, on the day of Dashera, it is lit in golden light and then, you know, it is all there around the news. Yes. So the answer to this question is Mesuru. Now, the next question is again a good one. They usually ask you that where do you found, find, where would you find Ikat print? Ikat kaha milta hai? Pochampalli Ikat, where will you find? 
uh, then obviously the question here is about the Maheshwari and Chanderi saris. I'm sure you know that Maheshwari saris and Chanderi saris they come from the state of Madhya Pradesh. If they ask you Bandhani, it comes from the state of Gujarat. So yes, textile craft of India is one of the most important topics. Let me do one thing for you. If you ask me, just tell us the topics which are important in left i'll tell first textile craft textile design from the states of india uh, muga silk eri silk then kosa silk then chicken kari lucknow i'm sure you know that so these are there are different batik print bag print they are different textile art crafts and textile forms which are popular in India. Ikat zarur yaad rakhega. And then you are obviously supposed to remember their origin of state and obviously the particular theme in Mahasyat. Answer to this question is Madhya Pradesh. That is Chanderi and Maheshwari Sari. They come from uh, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, which code in Rajasthan is a blend of Hindu and Mughal architecture? So the answer is Amer Fort. Yeah, Amber foot, that is the answer. There is nothing more to tell you on this. Uh, so, this is all I have for you for this question. The answer to this question is Amber foot. Uh, this question was there in one of the previous year exam papers. So, I have taken it that sh the Shidi Sai uh, temple uh, is there in Maharashtra. We all know that. And who of the following constructed it? So, it was Sriman Gopal Rao. Sriman Gopal Rao was the one who got this temple constructed. They usually, these people in left exam, they usually ask you the taglines. Your style, your store is the tagline of which of the following brands. So, it is the tagline of lifestyle. Your style, your store is the tagline of lifestyle. Uh, start something new. Start something new is the tagline of shopper stop. Start something new is the tagline of shopper stop. Pantaloons, ke, there are like multiple taglines to name a few. It is in love with life, in love with fashion, in love with life, in love with fashion, pantaloons. Rewrite rules, retain values. Again, this tagline is associated to pantaloons only. Right? Hanji. The popular fabric April brand J. Hempstead belongs to which particular group? So, it is a product of Siaram Silk Mills. 44th answer to question 44th is D. Siaram Silk. Ambassador of Vistara, I have just told you, I am sure you still remember. Ambassador of Vistara Airlines is Dipika Padukone. Now, during from the era of Britishers, which of the following cities is known as the Manchester of East? Which is known as Manchester of East. Manchester is known for its textile industry. So if I give you a hint, what in India, what place in India is known for its textile industry? So I'm sure you will not go for Nagpur or uh, Rajkot. It has to be either Surat or Ahmedabad. I'm waiting for your answer. Tell me, answer to 46th has to be Shreya saying Ahmedabad. Is there anyone who second uh, Shreya's thought that it is Ahmedabad? No, uh, Shreya, it is, uh, um, yes, it is Ahmedabad only. Ahmedabad is known as the Manchester of East because of its uh, textile industry, right? 42nd, 47th is a good question. They usually directly give you you know, the, the sub-brands and they ask you this popular jewellery brand belongs to it, what particular state. Yes, so 47th is Ethnics, Mine and Era. They are popular jewellery brands from the house of Malabar Jewellers. They are from the house of... Achha, this, this takes me to one good question of current affairs. There is this uh, company Deloitte, if you have heard, right? Deloitte, they have recently launched a list of 100 global luxury brands. 100 global luxury brands. In that list from India, <coughs> we have four, uh, four products. Yeah, four brands, which are, you know, in the list of the 100 most luxurious brands in this world. Out of those four, one is Titan. I'm sure you have heard about Titan. Titan is owned by the Tatas. The other one are here in the option. The other one is, is Joy Lucas Dwellers. Joy Lucas Dwellers. The next is uh, 
uh, this ZM, uh, what do we call as? I'm forgetting if you can help me with that. Bheem Das, Javeri Dwellers, Anna, jo, that, is, uh, that is one of them and the PC Dwellers. So they, these are the four brands which, uh, which uh, you know, are featured in the list of 100 global luxurious brands. This list is uh, or was a few days back released by Deloitte. So Joy Lucas is one of those uh, top 100 luxurious brands in this world. If you have not heard this uh, name before, now you should remember. Where is the headquarter of World Trade Organization? So World Trade Organization, WTO, is based in Geneva. Now, this question takes me to a few important more locations which you should know. So, I'll give it uh, an overview. We all have heard about this uh, particular organization, the United Nations Organization, the UNO. UNO is headquartered in uh, New York City, New York. Now, it I'm sure you know that it has got... Uh, you know, different uh, agencies under it like UNICEF, UNESCO, uh, WHO, FAO, UNHCR, UNHRC. So, just try to remember a few of the uh, organizations headquarters. Um, for an example, if I have to start with UNESCO, UNESCO stands for United Nations Scientific, Cultural, and UNES and Education Organization, right? So, UNESCO heritage sites hote, right so unesco heritage site matlab eiffel tower matlab paris it means unesco this is the just the way i'm making you you know uh, remember this fact otherwise there is no logic behind that so unesco's headquarter is there in paris unicef ka headquarter that is united nations children's emergency fund it is headquarter in new york only FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization, which runs world's biggest, you know, a food program, global food program. It is based in Italy. So, food, FAO. Uh, FAO, Food Agriculture Organization, it has, uh, on its logo, there, there are few words written. Fiat Panis. Fiat Panis is written over there, which means bread for everyone. They might ask you, Fiat Panis is the... Uh, is the logo of which of the following organizations. So, it is uh, for FAO and Fiat Panis means bread for everyone, right? Matla food for everyone, basically. Now, I'm, I'm telling you a few names. Please write it down somewhere. WHO, WTO, WMO, UNHCR, UNHRC. All these organizations, they have their headquarter in Geneva only. Most of the organizations of United Nations, they have their headquarters in Geneva. If I have to repeat, WHO, WTO, WMO, ILO, Indian uh, International Labour Organization, UNHCR, UNHRC. HCR is a High Commission for Refugee and HCR is uh, Human Rights Commission. They all are based in Geneva. So, you can even make a list of at least five to six organizations who are all based in Geneva only. Answer to this question is also Geneva. I'm sure you know that Pravasi Bharti Divas uh, is uh, to mark the coming back of father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi from South Africa. The thing happened on 9th of January 1915 and that's why in India, 9th of January is known as Pravasi Bharti Divas. In other words, NRI Day in India, right? The next question, the last question for the day is, which of the following UTs are now merged with Daman and Diu? So, Daman and Diu ke saath jisko merge kiya gaya hai, that is the Dadar and Nagar Haveli. So, the answer to this question is Dadar Nagar Haveli. So, now the new territory is named as, I tell you the name of the new one, that is um, uh, Dadar and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu. So, this is the new one. And this brings me to one more question for you. Can you tell me how many UTs are there in India and how many states are there in India? Tell me the number of UTs and states in India. I am waiting for your answer looking at the chat, chat box. In the comment, please tell me how many states and UTs are there in India. Do not Google search your answer. Directly tell me what will you say. How many states are there in India? 27, 28, 29. And how many UTs are there in India? Mehek is saying 28 states. And how many UTs? 
Eight UTs. Great. So we do have 28 states and 8 UTs in India, right? Okay, so that was all for today's session. I'm sure you got in the broader sense a point what should be done. If I have to recall what we learned today, so we learned the ways in which they may ask you questions. So if you ask me the topics on which you should prepare, I'll, uh, you know, uh, restate it for you. The first is textile crafts of India. Textile crafts of India is one topic. Second is sports. In sports, especially specifically, which person associates to which sport? That is something which you should know. Third, uh, the days like Pravasi Bharati Divas, International Yoga Day, something like that. Like now, uh, um, we just had Indian Army Day. Indian Army Day was on 15th of, uh, of January, if you know that. So, these uh, these things you should know. Third, uh, fourth, I mean, uh, fourth is Sobrequeue like orange city like city of lakes bhopal ko bhi kaha jata hai udaipur ko bhi kaha jata hai uh, so ye hona chahiye chal pa ask you who of the following is not known is not one of the members of the seven sister states can you tell me which one is which eastern state is not a member of seven sister states if i have to put options for you options are meghalaya nagaland sikkim and mizoram which of the following is not the member of seven sister states i repeat my options meghalaya nagaland sikkim and mizoram i'm waiting for the answer Meghalaya, Mizoram, Sikkim, Nagaland. Who of the following is not a seven sister state? Great. It is Sikkim. Sikkim is actually known as the brother of the seven sister. It is not the seven sister states, right? Ha, so what, uh, what, why did I come here? Uh, kaise hum the? So we were talking about what? Ha, the topic. So textile craft you should know. The headquarters of important organizations you should know with, with their logos, brands and their origin, fashion designers, their name you should know. And apart from that, Sobriquue is something which you should know. Sobriquue is just say, we have here, seven sister states. So, broadly, and yes, sports category, which person belongs to which sport, brands, apparel, their logo, their country of origin, uh, and the brand ambassadors. So broadly, these are the important topics for you, which you should go through before you, before you take your exam. And I wish you all, all the very best for your exam. Keep your mind cool. Have faith on your preparation. Prepare well, appear well. And all the very best from all of us at Creative Edge. Thank you so much.